So this looks very complicated, all these wires, but it's actually very, very easy. So the biggest thing is, is so this is actually three wires coming in. Typically most houses have one wire. Um, they've probably had modifications done over the years or wires been cut, so they keep adding. So the first step you need to do is figure out your commons. So in my case, this brown and this brown are commons and this white is a common. 99% of the time, white is always your common. So whoever did this, um, obviously, because they're running through different wires, didn't really know what they were doing. So what we're gonna do here is connect the commons to this screw down here, which is right here. These three wires here, typically there's only one. One white wire is your common. And then all of these wires are individual zones. So what we're gonna do is as you can see, it's numbered here, one through 13. So when you buy the clock, this is a Hunter Pro C, it comes stock with four zones. So if you have, let's say up to seven, you need to buy a modular. So all this is, is, and make sure it's off here Click it in, and then you would lock it down. As you can see, I've wired in all the zones. These two wires go into this black wire. So these are for the rain sensor. The two yellow wires going into the, or to the power. And this orange wire is for something called solar sync, which most people don't have. So you don't have to worry about it. A common goes to every single valve. Then these are your zone wires. So like for example, zone seven is green. Now this is a little more complicated because obviously there's multiple greens, multiple blacks, because they ran multiple wires. there's only one wire and each color is separate so you would have like orange purples all the colors that aren't in here because they didn't run um, enough wires now when I mounted this I forgot to film it so this is the faceplate and this is the lockable cover so this is a hunter pro c 400 they make a 400i which is for indoor which is essentially the same exact thing except for it doesn't have a lock on the front and you don't have to hardwire uh, 120 volt. You can just um, plug in the transformer into a regular outlet. So the way you put this back on is this goes right into here, just like that. And then if you see here, it says hinge release. So there's two pins that when you pull that down, slide into there. So. And that's all there is to it. So now, to put the faceplate back on, there's this pin with this little notch on the end. So all you do is you put your faceplate back like that, slide that pin all the way down through there, and then you click it over into that little corner there. And I'm just gonna put that in the mulch. So now, when you go to do everything, it's all right here. And that's all the internals. So, this is the wires, wireless rain sensor that we just installed. This is the corresponding part. So, it comes with a bracket like this that you can screw into the side of the house. But if you have gutters everywhere around and there's really nowhere to, and you have a soffit overhanging, there's really nowhere to mount it, they now give you a gutter kit. So 
all you do is you take off this nut and bolt, put it back on with this, and you can mount it on any gutter or you can mount it on the house. Now, typically, if you can see inside that fan, so you can adjust it to how wet you want it or how dry you want it. So basically what happens is that when it rains, there's a sponge in there that weighs down and it shuts the system off. If the grass is too wet, it will not run. I typically leave it about halfway. So depending upon your house and your environment, you can adjust that. Secondly, so as you can see, it's red, which means sensors off. So when you first buy it and first set it up, there's a black button right on top here. You hold that down for five seconds and you'll see it click to green. Now you're good to go. This is their old rain sensor. But if you look up, it's completely covered by trees. So when you install a rain sensor, you want to put it on the side of the house or somewhere because it's wireless it has pretty good range you want to put it somewhere that is not tree covered you want to put it somewhere that's exposed to sunlight so that it can gauge the rain properly